car fans. Welcome to the Muscle Car Modeler. My name is Ral, and this week I want to show you the completed build of my Ravel uh, 69 Chevelle SS 396, but I didn't build it as that. As you can see, I built it as the 427 Yanko Chevelle, and I did a few mods to it. If you saw my videos that, that highlight what I did and, and how I did it. But uh, a few things on the Yanko Chevelle. Um, which I always thought was a beautiful car. I really liked the, the stripes that he, that uh, Don Yanko used. But Don Yanko, he was uh, building and, and modifying cars, and, and he was a racer, and he was enjoying all of that. And he was really into road racing and his uh, Stinger project with the Corvairs, but he saw the demand for muscle cars and, and big, big engines and the cars that the factory didn't produce. But he was also a businessman, and he understood getting GM to do as much as they can so he used the Copo program and he pushed GM and he wasn't the only one but the one of the major players and he would ask GM to package certain things and and he was able to use the Copo program and get some things manipulated and tweaked the way he wanted and the Chevelle was one of those cars in 69 well in 68 they, they came out with the, the new body Chevelle like this and then they had the, the 396 um, Top Dog 375 horse motor, but the 427 was not available in the Chevelle. Um, it was pretty much uh, full size or Corvette exclusive. So, um, and he'd been swapping the 427s into Camaros for 67 and 68. And um, he was getting GM to package deals, some options together to make the job easier for him. And he did the same thing for 69, but for 69, he managed to get GM to actually put the motors in for him in some of the cars. The Nova was an exception. GM refused to put the 427 in the Nova, but he did get GM to put the 427 in the Camaro and the Chevelle for uh, 69. So for Chevelle, that was Copo 9562 is the code for it. And that you know, was basically the Malibu SS package. Well, the, the Chevelle, they did some changing around with the packages, so it's pretty much an SS, but instead of the uh, L78, 396, 375 horsepower, he got GM to swap in the 427 in it. And it came with a 12-bolt rear end, but it had a special heat-treated 410 set of gears in that 12-bolt. It wasn't the same as if you ordered 410s in your standard Chevelle. It had a special... 12 bolt rear end and the main thing was the ring gear was a, a special heat treated ring gear um, and posi traction and your choice of turbo 400 or manual transmission m21 four speed but one thing that set yanko's cars apart was um, if you've ever heard the term double copo um, his also included uh, code 9737 which got you the 15 by 7 rally wheels and the special uh, F70 by 15 Goodyear tires, which were not normally available on the Chevelle. The rally wheels were, but, um, and most of the other people that ordered Copo Chevelles, they ordered them without the wheels, so they came with different wheels, but Don Yanko's cars, it was considered the sports car package. It came with the 15 by 7 rallies. In the Camaro, it came with a bigger sway bar and a 140 mile an hour Speedo, but that was not available in the Chevelle, so it's pretty much the wheels um, that it came with. That's why in the, the model kit I was telling you the rally wheels are more correct. Um, but Don Yanko did switch out these Atlas wheels which are actually a copy of the Torque Thrust D wheels or the Torque Thrust wheels from American Racing but he didn't want to pay American Racing. He actually found a local company in Chicago that did aluminum and he talked them into copying the wheel and making them for him and he ordered a whole bunch and they agreed that they would uh, provide them at, at a cheaper price. So that's why that's his upgraded wheel and there are a ton of them and they're pretty rare because they're made by that company pretty much for uh, Yanko. Um, so they're pretty rare. And uh, another thing I thought was interesting was reading about this car, um, if I didn't mention it yet, he had ordered 50 of them the first batch and then he ordered 25 and then a third batch of 25 but apparently i don't know what happened with the last one but 99 were built so the numbers made me laugh when i was researching and and some things just don't add up um, one of the things that uh, they said was i read an article that claimed 
55 had four speeds and no power steering. Six of those four speed cars had a vinyl top. So most of the four speed cars didn't have a vinyl top. And that same article mentioned that 37 had the automatic. They did have power steering. All the automatic cars had the rear mounted antenna, but four speed cars could have had the front mounted antenna. So you see the antenna in different spots. And the automatics, supposedly of those 37, only one of the automatics did not have a vinyl top. So if you see a vinyl top on a real one, chances are it's an automatic. But there were six four speeds and there was one automatic without a vinyl top, according to that article. But what I thought was funny was when you add up 55 and 37, that's only 92 cars, not 99 cars. And then there was another one that mentioned the colors. It said there were 20 Le Mans blue, which is what I did here. I wanted to replicate Le Mans blue. There were 18 Fathom green cars, 16 butternut yellow cars, 14 hugger orange cars, 12 garnet red cars, 12 yellow Daytona yellow cars, five Dover white, and five Olympic gold. And I would really like to do um, one in Daytona yellow with a vinyl top and black stripes. But I decided I would add that up, but that's 102 cars. So there's three in there that aren't right. So I thought that was kind of funny. If he made 99, how do they have 102? But I couldn't find an actual registry that gave you real numbers. Um, don't know if anybody's actually got a registry. But uh, I, I thought the numbers were funny. And speaking of numbers, the, the last thing as far as uh, some of the oddities or some of the stuff, there was um, um, super stock and drag in their August 69 issue. They took one of these and they went and drag raced it. And um, they did pretty good. So as far as in, in this time period, they started off with doing 1385 at 103.68 miles an hour. And that was right out of the gate without tweaking it. Then they started... Uh, tweaking it and trying to tune it and do a couple of things and then eventually they, they were having traction problems so they put a set of slicks on it and by the end of the day while it was cooling off and the track was getting colder and traction was getting better they ended up running a 1331 at 108.04 miles an hour so that that's pretty fast uh, in its time period and then last thing with some of these the the Copo Chevelles um, Don Yanko Seeker got out of the bag so other dealers started to find out about the Copo program that were ordering them direct from him. So they started to really pump them out and order them. So there's a lot more uh, Copo 427 Chevelles. There's actually supposedly 323 built, but only 99 of them were uh, Don Yankos. And they're all a little bit different, but you could order the regular Super Sport stripes on it. Um, most of the other options... So Yanko kind of stuck to his formula, but when other people ordered the 427 Copos, they did a few things. But it came with most of the SS parts. He has the SS hood, a lot of the SS trim, the hideaway headlights, or hideaway wipers, not headlights, I'm sorry. Uh, the blacked out grill, but no SS emblems on the body. Some did have the SS emblems on the steering wheel. Um, the assembly line workers were a little confused. There were some reports that some of them had the Malibu emblem holes drilled in a quarter panel and a few of them had the Malibu trim on the side because they were kind of coated as a Malibu and they were kind of coated as an SS. So, But they all came with the bow tie emblem on the front, no SS emblem. And then uh, the back was blacked out just like an SS, but it got no uh, SS emblem back there too, but the SS exhaust tips. And pretty much all of the SS equipment and disc brakes in the front, they all had disc brakes. And uh, the special handling package and the sway bar in the back, all of the cars came with that. So, when it comes to my build here, um, like I said, it's mostly the Ravel kit right out of the box. I did carve out the SS emblem, and that's a photo etched emblem from Model Car Garage, one of the kits. And I bent it with the exacto knife to get it to contour, and I painted the blue in there, and detailed out the the grill and blacked out. The decals are from, uh, um, actually, they're from the Ravel '69 uh, Camaro Yanko kit, and then I used two sets to get the decal, the extra length because it's a little short, and then those came from Keith Marks, and then the 427 emblems were from. Uh, uh, Corvette sheet from Fred Katie. 
So it's kind of multiple decal sources for mine, and that's the Camaro decal, but I cut it up and reshaped it. You can go back to one of my videos and see how I did that. The wheels are added, so you can see the, the disc brakes there that I added. So the discs are in the front, the drums are in the back, and that's the Camaro wheels and tires. And then you can see the SYC and the headrest there. The interior, I removed the center console. I couldn't find any cars that I was using for reference that had the console. There was no mention whether or not uh, Yanko didn't order consoles. Um, but some had buckets, some had bench. So I went with that. And then I removed the SSM off the back, which was kind of a pain. And um, got that there and then put the emblems on there and blacked it all out. I had to refoil that section, so that's kind of brush painted and foil. I could have done a little bit better. Pretty happy with the taillights and then the decals there. Um, if you watched my video, I had some issue where the chrome was rubbing off. So I touched up all those areas with Motolo and it came out looking really good. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, I glued the, the bumpers on with white glue, so if I need to pull them back off and re-chrome them, I can. But uh, there they sit, and I'm real happy with the, the way she came out. And then there's the, you know, a nice shot of that. So maybe I'll, uh, uh, if you haven't seen, I've been teasing you. I haven't shown you the other underside. But I did decide, since Ravel gave you a separate chassis, that I would paint it like it's overspray. So there's gray primer in there. There's overspray of the blue paint that I had used, and then blacked everything else out. But no other real mods to, to the kit under there. And then the engine. There's the engine. And then I did remove the power steering pump to replicate a non-power steering pump car. I don't know why they don't have heater hoses. I'm kind of surprised that Ravel didn't do that when they put all the extra details in there. And then a couple extra decals for uh, Yanko. The Yanko tuned one right there on the valve cover. And then the Yanko 427 right there. The rest of the decals are all from um, the pretty much the Ravel Chevel kit. Oh, and this is uh, Keith Mark's decal right here. And I did add one to the battery right here. Um, that was from my parts box. I really don't know what kit that came from. And then polished out the paint. You saw some of that in the video. And then even the underside of the hood has decals, which are from the Ravel kit. And they look really nice. So I'm really happy with that. And very pleased with how this this one came out so I hope you guys really like it and really enjoy it um, front tires don't roll I glued them in place because of the disc brakes I don't want the caliper rolling around and then I know I get asked this the paint I actually used is right here this is old engine blue metallic by model master I'm kind of bummed that this is being discontinued by testers um, the model master line I've got a couple of bottles of it, but I really like this particular metallic blue um, which is why this one is this. I got uh, quite a few that I painted this color. So, you know, I get asked what paint I actually use, and I airbrushed it. And I used automotive uh, two part um, clear on there. So, real automotive Sherwin Williams clear. I have a video of the product if you're interested in that. Um, pretty expensive, but it, it breaks down pretty cheap for, you know, per car when you, when you add it all out, but it's still not very cheap. But uh, thank you for. Uh, subscribing and tuning in and all your comments and your support i really appreciate it and sharing my my videos and letting everybody see them so i really appreciate that and uh, you guys you have a wonderful day and i will see you next saturday